This is Dave Dubois down in Las Cruces, and let's do a roll call again just to so we know who else is on the line. Anne Marie Mathurin with USGS. Raymond with Bureau of Reclamation. Susan Rich with State Forestry. Mariana. Go ahead. Mariana Penny with Congresswoman Michelle with Congresswoman. Emilita Moody with the Farm Service Agency. Mary Ewell, BLM. Chuck Jones here, National Weather Service. I'm joined by Sean Bennett, or MIC, Molly Magnuson, and John Longworth from the State Engineer's Office. Okay, well, welcome everybody again. Um, our normal, uh, we to get started, we, we do the um, uh, National Weather Service report first to get an update on our um, status of drought. And go ahead, uh, Sean and Chuck. Chuck. Thank you. Well, for once we uh, have good news. Um, as you all know, September was just an incredible uh, uh, month uh, in terms of precipitation, uh, rainfall. As you can see here, this is not departure. This is actual uh, monthly precipitation. You can see uh, uh, air, many many areas of the state getting three, four plus inches of rain. Some areas. Uh, in the 8 to 12 inch range, so uh, and even higher. So quite an impressive month. Uh, the average statewide precipitation was uh, 4.02 inches, and you would think that would be a record, but as we'll see here in a little bit, uh, it is not. So yeah, we were the second wettest on record, uh, actually in 1941, in a, a very wet year, uh, really a benchmark year for statewide precipitation uh, in, in September of that year, we had 5.84 inches. So uh, we actually paled in comparison to that, but we're not going to complain what one bit. Now this slide needs a little explanation. Um, we have January through June precip on the left hand column, and then the normal precipitation for that same time period. And on the right is just a three-month uh, precipitation total, but it's the percent of normal for the entire year up through September. And I wanted to show you the dramatic increase in, in uh, the uh, percent of normal from the end of June through the end of September. Uh, so the, the big numbers here, the numbers to look at are like the 23%, and then now you know through September we're up to 107% of normal here at the Sunport, and, and so on and so forth. You can see a lot of places uh, that were you know, well under 50% are now, are, were now close to normal through September. And we'll see that theme uh, relative normal uh, throughout this presentation. Uh, we've gone from uh, very uh, well below normal, record-breaking below normal precipitation through June to uh, near normal now. So yeah, for the year, January through September, uh, statewide average, 104% uh, of normal. It's been a long time since we've seen that above normal percentage, uh, probably 2010. Um, Central Valley is doing the best, at nearly 125%, and uh, the worst uh, is still pretty good now, 97% of normal in the Southeast Plain, as well as the uh, Central Highlands here. That ends up being the 90th driest, i.e. the 29th wettest on record. <clears throat> so, not bad. The water year, which is now complete uh, from October of last year through September of this year, statewide average ended up 93% of normal. Again, the Central Valleys did, did the best, at just over 100%, and the Southeast Plains at 86%. Still not too shabby. That ranks as the 68th driest or the 50th uh, wettest on record for the past 118 years on this graphic. So we saw there we were the 
go back one. 68th driest for this year, for this water year. And if we go to a 24 month period from October of 2011 through September of this year, we're the 29th driest. 36 months, we're still we're still looking at a you know a long-term drought situation here. Now, obviously, short-term droughts we've put a major dent in it. Uh, we still have some impacts. You know, the longer term, the past 36 months have been the sixth driest on record. And just just to note, the 48 48 months or four years, 15th driest, and five year, uh, 14th driest. So still uh, pretty dry if you're looking at three, four, five years back. What's that mean in terms of our deficits? Well, amazingly, we ended up very close to normal statewide average for the year, just 400s below uh, for the last 12 months, the last water year. And uh, obviously, then we're still we're still seeing some big deficits as we go back in time, especially for the last three months. And boy, I, I don't know, I, it's not coming out good at all, but I wanted to compare what we were looking at at the end of June. Um, uh, 12 months was second driest, and, and we were the driest on record for the uh, 24 and 36 month periods. So if we've, uh, again, made a major dent here in the short term drought, uh, still have ways to go for the longer term. A little bit different graphic. Um, this is again uh, percent of average precipitation across the state through the first 28 days of this month. Most areas below normal, especially the east and, and the south. But uh, there are some areas the far southeast that are well above normal and uh, near normal to a little bit above over the uh, Sangre de Cristos here. But overall, uh, October is, is now back to. Uh, uh, what used to be our normal, which is below normal precipitation. The drought status, uh, this is the best it's looked in a long time. Uh, this, was, uh, this is through October 22nd last week. Much better, we'll, we'll compare it here to the one month chain and it's virtually none. The only difference is we added a, um, some moderate drought here in the uh, along the Colorado border uh, in the last month, but that's, that's the only change. But three month change, this is where it really stands out. You know, a huge improvement over, over the entire state, but you know, I do point out we're still, you know, almost just, just under 74% of normal, uh, or still almost 75% is still in moderate to extreme drought and 98% of the state you know, still abnormally drought, dry to extreme drought. But we have lost all the exceptional drought. Here's another way of looking at it. Uh, here's the, our last uh, drought monitor and, and the percentages here for the various classifications. And I just wanted to go back and look at the end of June, uh, the 1st of July, when we were at our worst, and compare that to where we are now. And uh, it's, it's certainly, especially D3 and D4, it's a it's huge, uh, huge improvement, as well as D2 to D4. And then again, just a side-by-side -side comparison. A little, a little easier way of looking at this down here from the end of June until uh, last week. Okay, what, what do we have for to look to uh, for the rest of the fall and the winter? Uh, the latest uh, from the IRI and CPC group, um, neutral conditions still expected through at least the winter, 2013-2014 probably into the spring. But the trend that I've been seeing the last couple of months is that we're, we're the, the forecasted uh, probabilities are for El Nino to maybe uh, 
uh, make a run here and, and, and get close to the uh, probability of, of the neutral condition. And you can see the, the, the models uh, are kind of trending toward that um, uh, neutral to perhaps uh, a little bit of an El Nino situation developing uh, later next year. <coughs> so it's probably important to point out the purple line because that's not. Where's, well, I'm sorry, I'm colorblind, but um, <laughs> the is consensus this, uh, line is not right on the right on the zero. It says basically. continues neutral. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the model dynamics are the yellow line, and it's it's edging upward. Yeah, more, it's not quite out of the 0.5, but right towards 0.5. Really close. Positive. Mm -hmm. I just thought it's interesting that the consensus is below both the composite for statistical and dynamic model. Yeah, there's human beings in that. So, yeah. no, no, I understand that. that. I'm yeah. just, so there, I, the human beings are not buying the models. Not to that. Well, yeah, it's not a big difference, but it's, it's no, they're no. not completely, totally sold. I would agree with that. Yeah. I suspect it's probably a little bit. Farther out in time, too, so their confidence is lower. I think that's another thing to throw in there. But, you know, if you look at December, January, February, even let's get into February, March, April, it you know, the consensus upward. is, you know, still negative neutral, but the consensus is still below, you know, the composites yeah. for the other two, you know, groups of modeling. I just think that's interesting. This point, I mean that's our that's our water maker right there. Let's hope the models are right. Right. Get it up here. Hey, hey, Chuck. This is Victor. Real yeah. quick, I, I'd hate to be a hate to be a wet blanket. No pun intended. But um, yeah, go ahead. I, I think that you know the, the in this in this IRI uh, product is uh, which they. You know, which were updated twice a month. In, in the first, in early, in early, let's just say, in early October, they do sort of a a human type product, if you will. The mid October, the mid month update is basically strictly plume based. As you see there, it says mid October IRI CPC plume based probabilistic forecast. This is based pretty much, I think, strictly the plumes. Um, if if you can call up the early October one. Um, and I guess the new, the new early November one should be out in the next week or 10 days. Mm -hmm. I think they're a lot more muted with the possibilities uh, of El Nino than the models are. Yeah. The model's been okay. seemingly showing a tendency for El Nino for the last two or three months, and it really hasn't been happening, to be honest with you. Right. So, Victor, make sure I get that right. The, the, the early months are uh, include... Uh, it, it, some some further analysis, whereas the mid month is just more or less straight model results. Yeah, exactly. The mid month one is pretty much straight models. The the one that comes out the first start of the month is uh, uh, more of a man machine type mix. Does involve humans, and um, I don't know if you have if, on your computer, Chuck, if you can find that IRI website. Maybe you can look at the one from mid October. I'd be willing to say that the be willing to venture that the probability of El Nino is probably a lot lower. Now I have all this linked, so I don't have to go and, through. And then the models have been uh, maybe just Google IRI space ENSO or something. Uh, the, the models have, in general, the models have had this tendency for wanting to show El Ninos, and that's why I think the you know, uh, you know that one product we just looked at is, is skewed the way it is. I, I think the the early October one is a lot more muted uh, with regard to, you know, looking at uh, the probability of El Nino. Yeah. Maybe do the Enso learn more. There you go, the October October 2013 quick look. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's 
you can see, okay, there you go on the left is the early October one. That's, that's a consensus probabilistic one. That's where the humans, uh, they bring in, you know, a, a cadre of experts and they, uh, you know, apply their, mod, you know, known model biases, et cetera. Anyway, so you, I guess you're looking at a 30% chance of El Nino on one versus about a 45% on the other. Thanks for that picture. That's interesting. Uh, well, uh, you know, I guess, I guess, you know, I don't know. I mean, I just, I just, I just don't want to make anyone be too over optimistic on, you know, chances for right, El Nino right. when, quite honestly, it doesn't really. The, the models I think have been struggling with the last couple three months, uh, with regards to showing a tendency for towards El Nino, which just really has not been, you know, verified. I think, you know, if you look at the objective where we're at right now. It's probably about as solidly in neutral as you could find it. And I don't see anything to change that. And if you read the most recent CPC um, and so diagnostic discussion, it pretty much states, you know, staying in so neutral, I believe, through, through the spring or into the spring yeah. of 2014. Yeah, I think it says into the spring. Yeah, yeah into the spring, yeah. All right, Vector, thank you. Uh, um, yeah, sorry. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, that's no great. Problem. Thank you. That's good info. Um, and in fact, then, we're, if you if you look at the uh, uh, CPC outlooks here, they're they're trending toward uh, below normal precipitation for November, uh, especially the southeast half of the state. Uh, well, again, temperatures are are uh, tilted toward uh, the above normal uh, range. And in the three months, too, November through January, as we get to well into winter, uh, pretty much the same thing, uh, the trend being toward uh, favoring uh, below normal, especially the farther southeast you go in the state. So that would certainly not imply a developing El Nino. Of course, they're not saying it at this point, but, uh, uh, you know, they're suggesting uh, still below normal precipitation for uh, much of this upcoming winter. But back, back on that one, I think the other important thing is, is that in our snowmaking country, it's still EC. Yeah, it's basically unknown. Uh, and then, hey, hey again, Chuck, this uh, is Victor. Back and chime in again real quick. I'm sorry. You know, that slide right there, you know, there you go, November through January. And you can see the tendency towards dryness for Texas and uh, New Mexico, which mm -hmm. is certainly not indicative, which is certainly not indicative of any kind of El Nino or El right. Nino feature. So even though the models seem to be trending, you know, that direction, it looks like the, the human added values most certainly not not buying, you know, not, not, not drinking the Kool-Aid, if you will. Absolutely right. Yeah, we're not in Almost like a La Nina with the wet Pacific Northwest. Yeah, Bite your I mean, tongue. And, <laughs> and, uh, it does look like that one in you, doesn't it? I think and, we all noticed that, Dave. <laughs> Be quiet out there. <laughs> and, and again, uh, the tendency toward above normal temperatures, uh, pretty strong uh, uh, tendency there. And then the drought outlook, uh, they're actually expecting the uh, drought to, to worsen or develop parts of southern and southwest, uh, west central New Mexico. Um, and, you know, you would kind of expect that as we head into the winter and we don't, you know, have a lot of nearly as much precipitation. So there's nothing out of the ordinary there, really. And that's all I have. One thing I want to add to this, and we didn't have a chart for it, is that because of the the wet monsoon period, we have better soil moistures, which means the soils are set up to um, better for the winter snowpack, which means that more water ought to go into runoff, whatever snowpack there is, instead of into filling voids in a drier soil. We see that uh, in various ways, but in our fire uh, program as well, so I put that in there. And then that's clearly uh, noticeable at like 2, 4, and 8 inches, but when you get down to 20 to 40 inches, it's not showing up quite as well yet. But certainly, yeah, the top several inches are, are much better shape. Good points.
All right, any more questions regarding the uh, outlook or any other stuff that Chuck presented? Okay. Well, moving on to uh, Raymond, Bureau of Recla Reclamation Report. Hello. Okay, so we'll start on Rio Grande. Uh, Pintoro storage, 8532 acre feet. Um, Aaron, 94,003 acre feet. Movado, 18,140. Abiquiu, 143,210. Cochiti, 47,187. Ellison Butte, 191,056. Caballo, 38,569. I'll go over the Bacos. Rosa, 100,555 acre feet. Sumner, 31,457. Brantley, 25,172. Avalon, 4310 acre feet. Now, the, big, uh, the numbers on the Rio Grande to keep an eye on, of course, are um, Allison Butte, Cavallo. And being that those are still far below 400,000 acre feet, we can't store water in the upper reservoirs, and which means Elvado is 18,140. We have no idea what we're going to be using for next year as far as irrigation. I mean, that's going to be for the district right there, everything in Elvado, and that's all we have. But on the Rio Grande, although on the, on the Pecos, that September event filled all our reservoirs. Um, we were down in the four digits for years now in those reservoirs, and now we're practically just all full. Um, but we have, it looks good for the Pecos for next year. We have not had this kind of water for a long, long time. So other than that, um, the districts will be shutting off Thursday, and, um, and uh, that'll wrap up the season for this year. That's uh, Middle Rio Grande. Yep, Mill Rio Grande, FSID, and CID. Mm -hmm. CID had enough water that they did some watering now this last this past month, and uh, but they'll be shutting off also both basins. You said EBID, they've been doing some watering. Uh, no, CID. CID. Sorry. CID below Brantley, uh huh. And then FSID. Yep. Mm -hmm. But they'll be all shutting off Thursday. And uh, we'll be just going to the winter flows. So, and then we'll, uh, of course, the Rio Grande should be continuous, and then the, Rio, the Pecos is continuous now. And, and once uh, that water settles out, once they dump all their water, we'll see what we go to for a winter flow and keep the river continuous on the Pecos also. So. Hey, Raymond, are you guys done running that water out of Cochiti? They're just about done. They had about five or 600 left. And then about five or four hundred left in Abiquiu. So yeah, all that water pretty much is out of the system in Allison Butte, to Allison Butte. Um, but we we really need some banner snowpacks to get out of Article Seven on the Rio Grande. Um, that's what did it last time. But I don't know. Now they're talking possibly below normal, and I just can't see it happening. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Raymond. Okay, uh, did we get anything, any uh, reports from NRCS? I didn't, I didn't see anything. In, whoops, sorry, I had a yellow mute. Mute. Um, did we get anything? <laughs> I was talking to myself here. Uh, um, did we get anything from um, from Wayne uh, from NRCS? I, I didn't see anything. Oh. Okay. Well, it's still pretty early. See much. Um, so let's move on to USGS and uh, Anne Marie. Hey, Dave, before you go yeah. on to that, uh, before I sure. left the office this morning, I just checked a couple of the snow tail gauges, um, and I looked at um, 
uh, their basin map, you know, that has, you know, percent of... Yeah, the filled basin. Stuff. Yeah, the uh, percent of normal kind of stuff, uh, you know, obviously it's too early to really make any sense of it, but just for discussion's sake was... Let me see if I can find it here. Of course, now I can't. Oh, maybe it's hard. There it is. Uh, well into the 200% of normal. Right. Um, but uh, when looking at actual total precip, uh, one or two stations were, you know, sort of at normal, which was like 0.25 inches or something like that. And so uh, in terms of snow water equivalent, there's a couple little bumps here and there uh, this month, um, but uh, didn't, you know, it, it, for the median, really it's, you know, this time next month when we really want to start seeing some snowpack. So. I just wanted to share that with a group that I did have a chance to look at. I looked at Hopewell, uh, Chimita, um, what's the thing in MS? Wesner, I looked at Wesner. Mm -hmm. What's that? Wesner, I looked at Wesner, and what was the one in, Pe in the in the Hemes? What's the Hemes? K Kamazo, or how do you say that? Capazone? No. <laughs> yeah, the one in the Hemes. Camazone. Camazone, and then I looked at um, the one near Taos at 10,000 feet. That one looked the best. That one was tracking right normal precip and um, had had a little bit. Of, I don't remember exactly what snow. You know, it's too early for the snow water equivalent. But anyway, there's definitely some precip, and certainly more than we had last year. Yeah, it's like it's off to a good start. Um, you just keep it coming. Yeah, I'm looking at the snow water equivalent. Yeah, was it the uh, upper Rio Grande 150? Uh, snow water equivalent percent of median. Rio Chama was showing 140. Sangre de Cristo was 284. This is the September 30th. I'm on the website. So, yeah. I'm looking at the West Wide Snow Tail current snow water equivalent for October 30th. Uh huh. Upper Rio Grande at 172, Upper uh, San Juan 223, um, Upper Rio Grande 178, or let me accept Colorado Upper Rio Grande 172, the Sangres 178, uh, Mid Valley 180, and then you know between 220 and 240 for the San Juans. But, you know, it's like a quarter of an inch. So, yeah, <laughs> a couple days, that all will go away. But I figured I'd share it anyway. Yeah, yeah. And not every not every station is reporting stuff there. So, But I heard some of the the, the ski basins were open, specifically up up in Colorado, right? So they get, they've been getting cool enough temperatures, right? Yeah. They're making snow. They're making snow, yeah. I, I heard that. Wolf Creek is open, but that was just a media report. So yeah, that's a good sign. I also got a report of ten and a half inches of snow up way up uh, uh, near Taos Ski Valley, near the base, uh, near the top. I mean, uh, awesome. that was twelve thousand some feet. So. Twelve thousand. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would make sense from looking at the uh, the snow tail site up there because they definitely had well, yeah, was one or two events. So, uh, oh, this was last night. Well, I look yeah. at it this morning, so, so it would be it there. It might have been factored in. Yeah. 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 That's good news. Yeah, even though that even though there's a, a huge A in in the uh, CPC maps, <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Okay, I think uh, Chuck has, has got um, the USGS uh, streamflow conditions map up on the go to. So Anne Marie, you want to uh, discuss that? Okay. Um, so this map presents. Uh, Streamflow conditions reported as cumulative average streamflow for the water year. So um, this, at this point, contains the entire 2013 water year, October 1st of last year to the end of September. Um, based on 21 um, river basins and gauges that are relatively unmanaged flow, um, the uh, green dots are the mid-range. Um, that's defined as 90 to 110 um, percent. The blue dots are above 110 percent and 89 percent and lower are in the orange dots. 
um, tracking the uh, precipitation, um, thankfully. We have uh, three stations that kicked up into the above average range. We have nothing that's in normal. The rest of the gauges didn't get enough to kick up um, above the below normal range, 89% um, of or lower. Um, the percentages range from about the low is 15 and the high was 165 percent. Um, and uh, we have a median of 43 percent of, of average for those 21 basins. Um, going through this by basin, the San Juan River Basin is represented by the Animus River. That's number 19 at 46 percent of average. Upper Rio Grande Tribs, those are numbers 7 through 12, 24 to 50 percent of average. Jemez River, number 13, is at 38 percent of average. And the Upper Rio Grande Main Stem, represented by number 9, the Rio Grande at Taos Junction Bridge, is at 43 percent of average. Canadian River Basin, we have um, the Upper Basin, by, uh, represented by uh, stations 1 to 3. Um, the tributaries in Colfax County, uh, 15 to 36 percent. Uh, downstream trips in Mora County, numbers 5 and 6, 15 to 57. And the main stem, number 4, is about 41 percent of historic average. The upper Pecos in San Miguel Counties, numbers 14 and 15. Pecos River at Pecos and Guyanas at Montezuma are, are at 49 and 62 percent of average. Um, just for reference, um, the end of August, those were at 36 and 21 percent, so they have bumped up, especially Guyanas, um, quite a bit. The lower Pecos in Otero and Eddy counties, that's numbers 16, 17, and 18, have stream flow conditions ranging from 31 to 165 percent of average. Um, the high, 165 percent, is the Delaware River at Red Bluff. Um, in September, that happened. There were two major events, uh, Delaware River and Red Bluff, and, and that got hit in uh, that major July event, um, July 17th to 18th, and then in September 12th to 13th. It got heavy rain again. Um, the, on the 12th, the daily average was 2180 CFS, and on the 13th, um, 1020 CFS. And <clears throat> the highest estimated instantaneous value was at about 10 p.m. on the 12th, um, where they recorded 16,200 CFS. And those, again, or estimated values at this point, but um, we have to go back and, and do the indirect measurements to uh, finalize those estimates. Um, the other two uh, gauges that kicked up into the above average range were both in the Gila Basin in Grant County. Mogollon Creek finished the year at 146 percent of average, up from 62 percent at the end of August. Highest flows were the 15th to the 18th of September. Maximum instantaneous peak, um, 8,830 CFS. Um, late on the 15th, um, at 8 o'clock next morning, they had a peak of 8,920. And then on the 18th, they had another peak of 8,440. Um, by contrast, the maximum for the period of record for that gauge occurred in August of 1967 was 10,800 CFS, so um, it didn't exceed the um, maximum instantaneous on record, but it was in the same range. Gila River at Red, <coughs> Red Rock has stream flow conditions that are 128 percent of average, which is up from 59 percent at the end of August. Again, they had <coughs> two periods of high flow generally the 11th to 12th and the 15th to 18th of September. Highest instantaneous peaks occur during that second period from the 15th to the 18th. Um, the maximum instantaneous peak was estimated at 12,000 CFS on the morning of the 16th. Um, again, period of record for that gauge was on December 19th, 1978. 
um, estimated at 48,800. So. In the case of the Gila, this value of 12,000 CFS is well below the maximum for that gauge for the period of record. And um, that's all I have for this month, unless there are any questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Anne Marie. Okay. Okay, well, let's move on to the Office of State Engineers report. Is it Mo uh, Molly or John? Uh, yeah, before I start, hey, Amory, do you send that uh, report out to the whole group? Um, are you talking about which one are you talking about? This just that sheet that you just showed that that we had up the PDF. Sure. Okay. I'd, I'd like to have that because I think that's pretty interesting how it contrasts with the National Weather Service kind of data shows that you know we're. We're well out of drought, kind of thing. You know, we've had these huge changes, and we're at normal. But the stream. This is the first time in the five, six, seven years I've been doing this where there's really been a difference between stream flow data and sort of the rest of the data that we've been seeing. I, th I think that's really uh, important. You know, something we should keep an eye on. So I thought that was really, really helpful. I'd like to like to have a copy of that report because that'll be. Somewhat helpful to me because I still get asked if the drought's over. Okay. Um, I appreciate it. Thanks, Anne Marie. Sure. Okay, I'll do do the report. It just yeah. uh, so again, you know, we're we're focusing on reservoir levels. We took out groundwater. I wasn't able to pull that together to see if there's any changes. Probably next month will be better to see if we can look at some changes around the state to see if there's any been impacts based on uh, the early season the pumping. And of course, we're going to look at average and last year's storage. So that'll be pretty exciting for the Pecos. Uh, we were able to get NRCS data uh, for all reservoirs. Uh, we did have to some some of the, the NRCS data has been. And I'm sorry, Wayne's not on. I'd, I'd like to kind of find out why that data has been spotty. Uh, we've had to kind of go to different sources to find data. But this month's report, uh, end of September, really was more or less complete except for the Pecos. And so we just pulled, we were just missing this year, this time last year's report. So we were able to pull that from um, their last year's report this time. However, that works out. And then, of course, they don't uh, do youth. So we, we've been bringing youth in, and we've been contemplating bringing in conscious, because conscious actually shows like it has some water now. Well, it has water. but. So we might be bringing that in. Um, and so uh, just to go overview, guys, if I've screwed anything up, let me know. And I, I will check with Raymond's numbers. Legend, I think you guys are all used to this. Oh, I didn't take off the conservation capacity. I've been trying to figure that out. So that's not on there. I uh, apologize for that. Um, other than that, average is the red line. If it comes through red, the darker color is what we think is current. And then the brownish color is what was last year. So starting up north, uh, Navajo, uh, average, you know, for this time of year, just under 14. Uh, looks like this time last year, we're just over a million, and uh, we're about 100,000 acre feet or so off of that, about nine and change. So we see a little bit of hit from where we were last year, but we're quite a bit off of normal. And I think uh, in talking with uh, some of the people who are intimate with this space, and we're, we're, this is going to be an area where a lot of people are going to be focusing on snowpack. Uh, this snowpack is starting to get down there in, 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 in Navajo, and, and that, that's a concern because it's about 400,000 acre feet, uh, triggers some pretty significant shortage sharing uh, agreements, and if we don't have a good snowpack, that uh, that that may come into play. So just uh, FYI, it's too early to really say, but uh, I think this is uh, this this is not the trend we wanted to see. Uh, you um, doing pretty good. Uh, obviously, not a lot of drawdown out of you. Uh, we picked up a little bit of water here from this last uh, batch of storms. Most of the water that came out of the um, east slopes is in uh, conscious. And again, I apologize for not getting the conscious in there. I, gosh, I want to say it was. Molly, you remember it was like 100,000, maybe 100,000 plus, something like that? Yeah, but it was by something, something in the 100,000 range. So it's the first time we've seen conscious with that kind of water for quite a while. Um, next meeting, uh, I'll try to get that in there. Um, so uh, definitely saw a little pickup on the Canadian. Next slide. 
And then, of course, the big winners, as we all know, was the Pecos. And so here's a real good kind of um, depiction of, of where we were last year, where we are now. It's, uh, you know, things turn around in a couple weeks, which is not unusual for this system. But I think it's also interesting to note that the average, it's, you know, we've blown away the average storage as well. So that's uh, a really good news for the Carlsbad folks and operations on the Pecos. And we can just skip through these next couple pretty quick because it's the same story. Uh, well above average, blew away last year. I mean, we've, you know, this, this is a major event, we all know. Next. And then Brantley, same story, um, well above average. I think it's come down a little bit. It was, uh, I think, a little bit higher than this maybe last month. Uh, so that kind of plays into what Raymond was saying earlier, that they've been drawing some water out of that to get, uh, imagine, their fields wet and maybe some, some winter wheat planted. Moving on to the Rio Grande, uh, San Juan Chama storage. Uh, I think that's a pretty interesting chart there. Uh, normally, on average, you know, you're expecting between 300 and 350,000. Uh, this time last year, just under 200,000, so we lost about a half of last year's uh, cumulative storage. Um, I think we, Raymond said 94, I think that's the number we had, was about 94. Some significant ditches were a little bit off there, so we're, we're right there. So that's, that's notable, um, I think, in terms of, you know, this is non-native water where, where that storage, you know, has kind of come down way down. Again, this is a San Juan. Uh, basin uh, to dry out uh, to see what's going on there. I know last year, what was probably March or so, maybe February, that uh, reclamation was concerned with perhaps maybe uh, making a, uh, a reduction in uh, allocation for San Juan Chama. Um, so, if, you know, we just were all, I think, interested in that. And this, this is not a good one. Go to the next one. Elvado, same story as what Rain was saying. Normally this year, we're you know at the end of the season, we're we're holding to stay about 110,000 or less. Uh, so you you've got some good planning numbers, but we're in Article Seven, and so we've been stuck at that 20,000 uh, down a, a little bit from this time last year. So uh, again, the same story. It's uh, snowpack, snowpack, snowpack. Uh, Abiquiu uh, is the re-regulating reservoir on the Chama. It's uh, always right around the same thing, but uh, this is the first time in a while. For this time of year, we've seen it down uh, below average, and so um, I think some of that's probably attributable to some of the leasing that went on this, this year uh, between the city and the Bureau. And then, you know, the deal of the day, Elephant Butte, um, I think we have a pretty close number. Raymond, you said you had 191. Raymond, you still on? Uh, I guess we lost I Raymond. But I think, oh, Raymond, you there? No, I think he left. He left. All right. So I think he had 191. I think we had something a little bit less than that from. Um, um, well, our number was the end of. September. September, right? That's we've gotten, that's, some, we've gotten some, some more, yeah. But it's still under 200,000, so I mean we're more or less the same there. Uh, again, a little bit, be little bit better than last year. I think this is a real telling thing of all that storm that we had. Elton Butte still sort of in the in a very dry situation, um, not even halfway to 400,000, I mean, well off the average. Uh, this is, you know, obviously big, big problems for southern New Mexico on the Rio Grande. And Last one, Cabayo kind of snuck up a little bit there. There was definitely some storms up in the, uh, I think they were somewhat in the eastern, um, excuse me, western trips that contributed to Cabayo's uh, storage there. Um, dropped some pretty heavy rains. I think there was some flooding there. I think we had one loss of life. Um, but still, even with all that, we're still below average. So it's uh, pretty, pretty remarkable. And I think that's all I got. Yep. Okay, thanks, John. Sounds like we lost somebody else. Um, I, don't, I didn't see Les's report, or I haven't heard from him. Les or Ryan. Um, so I'm assuming he's not on. So, okay. Uh, let's move on to uh, Emilita, Farm Service Agency. You still on? Yes, I'm here. Great. 
FSA doesn't have anything new to report this month. Okay. Okay. I got a quick question, Emilita. Are we still in uh, declared drought status? I mean, I think we had most of the counties of the state. Is that still ongoing or with with the changes in the drought monitor, um, are counties starting to drop out or how, how does that work? I mean, when is that going to kind of come into play? Well, that's a good question. Uh, Joy Lynn's not here today. She's sick. But I haven't seen anything change on that. But she would she would have to provide that information to you. Okay, I was just curious. Okay. Is that something we could uh, follow up on? Yeah, I mean, we could wait wait till next meeting. That'd be fine. Okay. Yeah, that was actually I had a similar question. Uh, okay. All because right. I think those Go ahead. declarations they came out like last January or something like that. And then, you know, they kind of stepped them up as things got worse and worse. And I think they generally were for like a year or something. And so I just was curious when those level, you know, when those counties and those triggers start up again. So anyway, yeah, if you want to follow up with me, Separately or send an email to the group, great. When Julie okay. gets back, or we, we can wait till the next meeting, whatever. Well, I do know that those drought declarations have a beginning and an ending date, so we're considered to be declared in drought through that period, and that never changes. So, unless something new is sent out, that's how it is. So, but I'll get Joy Lynn to follow up on that. Great. Uh, I appreciate that because I, I guess what I'm curious about is um, when were they made and when do they run out? Okay. I mean, not that we have a farm bill to really worry about, but yeah. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, not. Yeah, we'll follow up on that. I appreciate that. I did see some um, on Twitter. Somebody mentioned um, drought. I mean, not drought. A flood declaration. You know, um, I think it was President had a. Did anybody see that? I haven't seen one of those come through. No? Okay. I no. thought I saw, uh, I, uh, the, maybe I saw the same post, I forget who it came from, but that uh, the president signed some... It was in a newspaper. Uh, after, uh, ...emergency. Yeah, that's the same. It was either the Sun News or the Albuquerque Journal, one of those. Huh. I usually get a copy of that, and I don't remember seeing that, so... So we'll it might have been on. yesterday. Okay. Might, yeah, like it might have been like the last 24, 48 hours kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay, anybody else have any other questions? I, I just I just want to throw out there so everybody knows in case they haven't heard or if they're interested, the drought task force meeting that was scheduled for next week has been postponed and no date has been offered. So... Um, pressure's off. I think my guess is everybody feels like the drought's over, so notice A, no press, B, politicians are backing off, so we can kind of go back to quietly doing our business. <laughs> All right. Okay. If I get a date, I'll send it out. Great. For my husband. Okay. So any other last-minute items? Before we uh, find a next next schedule meeting time, okay. If anybody has any questions, they can always email, <coughs> call, or whatever. Um, so for November, um, let's see the second week. Uh, the fork, the CPC comes out on what twenty first, the third. Correct. Third uh, Thursday, um, give you some time to mold over. So, what do you think about um, Tuesday, the twenty sixth? That's uh, a couple days before Thanksgiving. Is that going to be an issue for anybody? I don't think 
anybody from FSA will be here. Jory Lynn or I won't, but, but that's fine. This is Anne Marie. I'm going to be out as well. Uh, how about uh, how about the 22nd, the Friday before? Is that a better date? Weather service can do that too. Yep, that works for me. Emily. Okay. As well. Okay. Um, uh, what? Go ahead. What time, Dave? Can we? Um, um, I still have my class on Fridays. Can we do it in the afternoon, or when? When is when is when are folks available? I I get out at like um, eleven thirty. I could rush right up and and do eleven thirty to twelve thirty. Or we can do another twelve or two o'clock or. All right, I've got a or, uh, another meeting the afternoon. Molly can come up, so we're we can cover it. How about the weather service? Um, I'm working an operational shift. Um, uh, afternoon's worse than the morning, but if everyone likes the afternoon, uh, that's fine. I can either switch or just try to get everything done early. Perhaps Sean did. So we'll, um, um, a, uh, 1130. Well, that's, that's awfully quick. Do you want to do noon again or is that people can eat and talk same time? Will that work for everybody? Works for me. Okay. Another brown bag. So that's that will be November twenty second, a Friday, um, noon, and that will be the time change right this weekend, right? Yeah. So we're back to the standard. So. Yeah. Sure. Right. So November twenty second, noon, and uh, we'll send out uh, Chuck will send out an invitation prior to that. So good. Good. Talking to you all, to you all and uh, we'll see you uh, next time. Thanks. Thank you. Thank Take you very care. much. Thank you.